Hello, this is Edward Lambert with another video from Six Element Theory for Acupuncture. And this is going to be a very special video. It's about a very special aspect of the uh, Six Element Theory and the Spherical Meridian Flow. This is the weaving of the six living elements. And um, let me just get started and uh, let it develop as it goes. When the triangles of foot yin and hand yin unify, the normal sequence of the elements is reversed. See the orange arrows down below here? You'll see that the arrows go from earth to fire to wood to seed to water to metal. That's the reverse of the normal flow of wood to fire to earth to metal to water to seed. So even though this may seem incorrect, there is a tremendous wisdom behind it. There's a reason. There's a logic. There's an understanding. And that's what I'm going to be developing in this video. So the yin meridian of an element supports the yin meridian of the preceding element. This reversal of element order among yin meridians is built into the structure of six element theory, which, which is seen in the spherical meridian flow. Now it is beautiful, but why does it happen? Why does this occur in six element theory more so than in five element theory? This is what I'm going to be developing. Okay, let's go back to Aristotle to start talking about this. Aristotle saw a way to distinguish living from non-living beings. He saw that a living being can be defined as anything that has the ability to change its own form and function. On the other hand, a non-living being is defined as anything whose form and function can only be changed by external forces acting upon it. This distinction is a wise one. It describes the difference between six element and five element theories, which I go into in another video. When we observe all natural forces like lightning, wind, rain, light, landslides, and volcanic eruptions, we see that they behave like non-living beings. They cannot change themselves. The interactions between the elements and five element theory show that elements act upon each other in the same way that non-living elements do and they change between each other as non-living elements do. This is seen in the cycles of five element theory, especially the co-control cycle, which describe how non-living things are shaped and formed by external elements acting upon them. But within living beings, we see that the elements are unified in a spirit of cooperation in the spherical meridian flow of six element theory. The elements come together as one living being which can transform itself. The elements of six element theory are living elements. This process is not taught by five element theory, but it is taught in six element theory. In fact, the reversed element order by yin meridians explains how this happens. It's a big part of it. All natural elements of the environment become unified within a living being. The living being is then self-sufficient and able to transform itself. This is a prerequisite for life. The natural elements will no longer be independent of each other. They become dependent upon each other. They have to communicate and work together to secure their survival as one being, not separate elements. There must be a productive and cooperative harmony between them. The matrix of the spherical meridian flow achieves this integration of living elements. This is six element theory. The spherical meridian flow has unified natural forces in such a way that they become alive as one being. They then express differently than they would in nature. The core structure of the six elements does not express destructive control relationships between the meridians. It expresses constructive cooperative relationships. How do the elements communicate with each other to do this? It is in how they link together. The linkage is like weaving two pieces of fabric together where the needle passes back and forth between the yin and yang fabrics. The elements unify their development in feedback loops. I want to show you a special animation right now to, to show this. Okay, now here I have the meridians lined up. You'll see by elements, first the seed, the sanjiao and pericardium, then the wood elements, gall, gallbladder and liver, then the fire elements, small intestine and heart, and so on. And I have the, the yang meridians of the elements up above, from sanjiao, gallbladder, small intestine, all the way over back to sanjiao. And down below I have the yin meridians of the elements, from pericardium to liver to heart to spleen, 
they're lined up in a row. So the normal process of the element order is right here. Seed to wood to fire to earth to metal to water to seed. That's the normal process of how the, how the elements generate each other. But that's among the, the young meridians. Now we go to the yin meridians. And we're going to see that this process goes in reverse, like I showed in the first, the first slide of this video. The element order goes in reverse. So you have the yang meridians flowing in one direction. You have the yin meridians flowing in the opposite direction. Now the elements are woven together in the spherical meridian flow with feedback loops through the yin meridians. What does that mean? I'm going to show you at this moment a threading, and you're going to see lines moving around, and that's how the meridians relate on the surface of the spherical meridian flow. It doesn't show all of the arrows and all of the relationships on the surface of the spherical meridian flow, but it shows these important ones. So watch. Watch what happens. Do you see it's like threading a needle back and forth, creating feedback, feedback loops between the elements? Okay, let, let me run the animation again so you can watch it. This is how the meridians flow around the surface of the spherical meridian flow. This is how the elements are tied together. And in order to do this, the yin meridians flow in the reverse order. Now, it was very surprising to discover this relationship on the spherical meridian flow, but it turned out to be a wonderful discovery. The wisdom of reversing the element cycle is brilliant. The forces of nature are unified in a way that allows them to influence their own formation, such that their formation is not independently controlled by external forces. By weaving together the elements, each element can cultivate its mother element. By cultivating its mother element, each element is able to influence and ensure its own formation. This is total cooperation and dependency. In living beings, the child element is able to influence the mother element and thus influence its own development. The child element communicates its consciousness with its mother element. The mother element then responds by generating what the child needs. This is all done in a refined and living way. Even more, the child element is able to influence its own evolution. That's the real key here is that when you bring all the elements unified together, in the heart matrix, in the heart center, in the spherical meridian flow, and have them communicate and cooperate, you then allow a living being to have the ability to evolve through time. So evolution is built into this weaving of the elements. Offspring actually have some influence over the evolutionary process. They don't just take what they are given. In a living being, there is mutual support and rooting between elements. This is a powerful way to harmonize and unify the elements. Once unified together in the spherical meridian flow, the elements of nature come to know and respect each other. They put roots into each other. In this way, their destinies are ensured and evolution of living beings can progress wisely. It is as if the rain has learned to cultivate the air that carries it or that the mountains have learned to cultivate the molten lava that creates them, or that the ocean has learned to cultivate the rivers that feed it, or that the atmosphere has learned to cultivate the earth that breathes it into existence. It, it's, it's a whole different world, but this is what happens inside of living beings. The deep truth is that life learns to cultivate the primordial power that gave it life in the first place. The special way of nature is only found in the nature of living beings. It is not found among elements in nature. It is enlightening to describe meridian theory for how the elements interact within a living being instead of in nature. This is what six element theory does. The reversal of the elements among the yin meridians is naturally built into the structure of the spherical meridian flow. It distinguishes a living being from a non-living being going back to what Aristotle was saying. By weaving together nature's elements for life, the spherical meridian flow teaches the ultimate lesson of life on Earth. It is a lesson of permanence, cooperation, and unity. It is the utmost lesson about the wise unification of different elements. 
Learn to be humble and care for that which supports you. It is a lesson of how to take good care of the planet and the people we live with. We should cultivate the earth instead of simply taking from it. This is how the elements interact in the spherical meridian flow. This is the nature of a living being. This is who we are from inside. We need to live this way on earth. By taking good care of the planet and the environment, a living being ensures its existence. And this weaving of the yin meridians teaches us that it's built into our genetic structure, our meridian genetic structure. The weaving together of the six living elements teaches that life and consciousness can transform its own self. We can distinguish ourselves as living beings from non-living beings. Five element theory uses the elements as forces to achieve balance. Six element theory uses the elements as cooperative forces already unified in peace. Here is a quote to make this clear. It's from Rooted in Spirit by Lar and Rochard de Levaille. This is a section of the Weiji and the Liji. From the first moment of existence, one's heart is in a place of the most absolute calm. It is free of all desire. So imagine the spherical meridian flow sitting there in the heart matrix, in the heart center of a, of a being. It's in its absolute calm, free of all desire. Heaven creates it in this state. Soon external objects act upon it and produce diverse movements. These are desires that add themselves to its nature, to its original state. In the presence of external objects, one has the faculty or the desire to know them. When one knows them, one experiences feelings of attraction for some and feelings of revulsion for others. If one does not master these feelings, one lets oneself be drawn towards external things and becomes incapable of returning within oneself and regulating the movements of the heart. This is, ex this is describing how the spherical meridian flow sits at our center in this calm, peace, original state, and then it begins to live in this five-element world of, of experiences and attractions and revulsions. And if we don't master this five-element world, we lose the six element eternal peace and harmony with this in us. Five element theory speaks to the external objects acting upon the six element spherical meridian flow sitting in the heart center. We recognize the feelings of five element theory, but we choose to master them in order to return to the calm unity of the six element theory at the heart center. Acupuncturists should not describe life by only using five element theory. They only have a model to describe the external objects acting upon each other. They then add that we must cultivate our pure and virtuous nature to live in a healthy life. However, six element theory has a meridian model to describe our pure and virtuous nature. Six element theory uses that model for treatments. So we must see the elements in a cycle of cooperation. We must see that the six living elements have their roots in each other. We must know that the elements interact in total peace in their original essence. And all this takes place in their unification in the heart center, in this meridian spherical matrix, which exists. Mystics have talked about it for thousands of years. We must know that the elements of nature behave differently inside us than they do outside us in nature. Why? Because we are alive and the heart matrix is alive within us, and the heart matrix has unified the conflicting forces of nature peacefully within us. It is easy for people to forget the pure and peaceful original movements of the heart in a world full of five element interactions. In developing wisdom, we learn not to be attracted to external things. The quote above from the Liji makes it clear, once you return within yourself to find the good tendencies of heaven, you will find peace and health. That is the spirit and nature of six element theory. One beating heart of unified meridians. And this reversal, this weaving of the yang and yin meridians, like thread through a fabric, shows us how intimately tied and how beautiful the relationship is through the spherical heart matrix. Thanks for listening.